You said that you did research what kind before. So, you know, most of my research was before was actually in college. Um, when I finished my master's, my master's was over uh, landscape geological processes on the evolutionary ecology of fish, uh, specifically looking at fish in Texas, New Mexico, and in Oklahoma, looking at them as a holistic approach instead of um, cutting it off by jurisdictional boundaries. kind of did that anyway because I was looking at the three states, but um, looking at it for three states instead of just one state, which is normally what most research um, is going to do, um, that was my big research project. Uh, so Gentle, it's important because they cut off borders based on normal ranges. So as things change, as river flows change naturally, different fish might get cut off and or gain access to something they didn't have before. So you do geographical studies based on state boundaries too, rather than just regional, to try and figure out if they were originally from there or if they were cut off or put there. I'm and it helps gonna, with invasive species. I'm actually going to step in and say your answer is a proper answer that's politically correct. However, I'm going to completely disagree with you. Um, because what funds research problems? <laughs> that's primarily <laughs> um, loans or grants from your the Natural Department of Resources in whatever state you're in. Well, those states, those natural departments, those natural resources departments only have jurisdiction at, you know, usually state boundaries. There are not really coalitions. There's not a Florida, Georgia coalition of natural resources. So that's why they stop at borders. Texas Parks and Wildlife paying for a grant, paying for a college student to do research, they're not going to pay for that student to do research in Oklahoma and Tennessee, even though those riverine systems are technically linked. Not Tennessee. Um, Louisiana. There are, you know, those systems are linked, but they're, that's outside of their jurisdiction. So quite frankly, they, it's not that they don't care, it's that they can't care. I understand what you mean, nature doesn't care about borders, and there has been multiple works about trying to get people to collaborate more and more. However, when money talks, and you're talking about research projects, you're kind of limited to whatever your bounds are. So, yes, Penguin's answer is correct in that, you know, we look at state boundaries, you know, yada yada, but in my opinion, um, me being a little jaded, it's they're not going to pay for something out of their jurisdiction. It's like me. I'm not going, you know, my jurisdiction is one. Um, it's two upper watersheds, very, very small watersheds. Um, so I'm not going, you know, if I was being asked to fund a project, I'm not going to fund a project in, you know, Houston, Texas, seven hours away from me. Why would I do that? I'm not going to fund a project when it has no direct influence what I do, what my research or my future powers. Well, conservation has become more of a focus rather than just, we just care about our own state. Exactly. Well, it's not just conservation has been a focus. You know, you look at the history of conservation efforts and, you know, before um, it wasn't until uh, like the late sixties, that conservation really became even a science. Um, before it was, you know, what we what was it before 1950, especially in the late 1800s, early 1900s. It was what was natural resources about. It was about making the biggest deer, the best bass, the biggest catfish, the biggest striped bass. It was all about uh, game fish, game fish. And especially in Texas, oyster pearl production. Because that's where money is.
just yeah just like the great lakes area was um yellow perch exactly <clears throat> exactly on top of all the other commercial fisheries so before you know it wasn't it's not until recent that conservation even became really a thing because managing for deer um is completely different than managing for rangeland, you know, for, I don't let's say like lesser prairie chicks. Managing for deer is completely different than managing for lesser prairie chicks. Um, you know, incredibly endangered species. Uh, managing for deer is completely different than managing for prairie dogs or black-footed ferrets over in Arizona or the gopher tortoise, things like that. Do you, would you say it's harder for terrestrial animals versus aquatics? Or vice versa. In terms of conservation? Yeah. You, it's 100% harder for, for aquatic species, in my opinion, for conservation efforts. Um, but there is a caveat to that, in that one of the best things for it is, you know, Water Act. Protecting water quality has really helped a lot of aquatic species in the sort of short term. Um, we've always known about um, you know, terrestrial species, but the simple fact is, is it's easy to be out there. You know, you're looking at you're on in the Great Plains in northern Texas, Texas. You're like, hey, last year I saw. 30 lesser presser, prairie chickens. This year I only see 20. Hmm. Next year I see 15. Hmm. Something's going on. Let me see it. Where, you know, versus a river or a stream, it's it's an out of sight, out of mind sort of things. People are not slapped in the face with, um, you know, with fish being gone. Um, another thing about it is, one of the better things about terrestrial animals is they don't like where they are. They have the option. I'm going to put this in quotation option to move, go somewhere else. Um, the poor fish that's in a very polluted stream cannot just decide I'm going to go across and go to this other stream. So, but because of pollution criteria and pollution standards, across the nation clean water not necessarily the drinking water but just clean water has probably helped many aquatic species from getting into trouble the first part. now like now you're in right. your career field politics has become more prevalent yeah and it's going to be and i don't necessarily mind that because um i don't i don't like the political game because it's back talking and lawyers it's just that's how that's and that's how it's going to have to be across the entire u.s with the way that current water rights laws are um across the u.s you know there's going to be a big i don't know come to jesus meeting i mean quite frankly it's water rights are the hot issue and they have been for 25 years and they're going to continue for 25 more years you look at the sheer amount of water being water usage and it's hard it's hard to find an argument that says um beef or cattle production is better than catfish production Culture facility. In fact, I kind of guarantee I c cannot really physically come up with any sort of argument about that. Um, aquaculture, you know, catfish aquaculture facilities in the long run use much less water. However, there is a much more upfront cost of water. Don't get me wrong. You know, an aquaculture culture facility a new aquaculture facility is going to pull three million gallons of water 
kind of immediately that they need on the front. But then after that, most aquaculture facilities, um, especially catfish production, you're looking at what a 1% change a month of water um, in a, in a completely enclosed system. Like I think what you work in penguin, you're looking at what a 10% change a week. Uh, it depends on the, the uh, season. If it's summer, it's maybe a little higher. If it's winter, mm-hmm. it's almost nothing. Right. It's and very negligible. Yeah. You th- look at, you know, water usage to put a pound of, a uh, put a pound of catfish on the table. I think it's, six tenths of a gallon of water versus to put a ounce of beef on the table i want to say it's over 70 uh, maybe even over 100 so even just in sheer water you're using literally a one percent of the amount of water for 10 times meat and grow in 3d it's you can't make a valid argument other than beef tastes better I'm sure they made a ton of money if they were partnered with SeaWorld and everyone else. They could just charge. Oh over yeah, money. SeaWorld burns through money like nobody's business. Oh, well, there's a whole issue of lists I have with SeaWorld specifically, but most people do that. I don't understand. really want to get into it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're not going to get into the Shamu. I don't even I don't even care about the the whole like because I mean okay. Slight off topic, but like the orcas did die when that happened because when they couldn't swim with their best friends, they got depressed. That happened. What I hate is that they only front the big, the big ticket, quote unquote, items like dolphins, orcas. Ocean conservation is more than just coral, dolphins, and the mammals. It's not just those. All right, but now I'm going to grill you, sort of devil advocate. What sells? You know, you're well, that's ex- the problem. You're exactly right. Like you talk about big ticket items, but the simple fact of the matter is, is that that is your ticket. That's literally it. If it's not coral or marine mammals, they don't care. They don't give a shit about look down jacks. They don't give a oh, I know. shit about, you know, that used to. So like what sells, what's going to draw the crowd in terms oh, of the actual yeah. polyculture system. I mean, Nothing is going to compete with the um, polycultural systems um, in rural China. It's it's just not. You can't get it. Um, it's just impossible. I mean, you got seven things being produced in one body of water, one small hillside, and you're growing rice, you're growing pigs, you're growing silkworms, you're growing fruits, you're growing two different kind of carp. So you're growing seven things in um, one pond. Not like crop rotation, gentle, because they're all doing it at the same time. You plant the rice. You flood the rice. You um, let the pigs eat the dead rice material, and their uh, feces are fertilizing the rice. You have carp that are also eating the dead plant material, um, and then you have carp on the bottom eating the fecal matter the leftover fecal matter that is fertilization but when those carp die and or you harvest them you feed them to the pigs so you're feeding the pig part of the carp crop and then you have mulberry trees next to that pond and the mulberry trees um mulberries are an incredible fruit um so they're harvesting the fruit however they're also letting silkworms spin their silk cocoons in the mulberry trees so they can harvest the silk um, from the mulberry tree as well. So they're harvesting silk, mulberry fruit, and you have two kinds of carp keeping your sort of pond clean and your rice growing down there. And then you're eating the carp and feeding the leftover carp to the pigs and then watering the pigs. Pigs are helping fertilize the um, rice to completely destroy the beef. Shouldn't. Um, because you know think going back to what i do working with landowners i work with cattle ranch and i don't want that i grew up a cattle ranch and quite frankly your farmers and ranchers are the ones who care the most about the land um than you can imagine you know 
Because you have to think about what is all conservation money comes from. Conservation money in America comes from the Pittman Robertson Act and the Lincoln Douglas Act, yada yada. But every time you buy a firearm, anytime you be buy ammo, anytime you die buy die die, anytime you buy fishing gear, you know, a fishing pole, uh, lures, a fishing license, yada yada. A portion of that money, there's an extra tax that people don't realize on top of those things. And that money goes into a federal pot if it's uh, firearms or lures or anything like that. Hunting licenses stay where their uh, section is um, holiday. So like Texas hunting license, that money stays in Texas. However, ammunition goes to a federal pot of money that gets distributed among the states for conservation projects and easements and just conservation works and it's distributed by how much that state has put into the pot that's one of the best advices i can give any students nowadays is you would be very surprised how many professionals remember your names or what you do and in the natural resources field, I used to say, you know, this certain thing, you know, that old adage, it's not what you know, it's not, it's who you know. And that's not quite correct in the natural resources world. What, and then finally someone else put it this way, and I loved it, and I've been saying it ever since. It's not what you know, it's who knows what you know. So when you put a reference on and these people have heard of you before, they can say, oh, yes, he knows this skill, that skill, this skill. He's comfortable at this skill, yada, yada. Yeah, my last one <laughs> kind of ties into that is, do you think that aquaculture has a future going the way things are? Okay. Yeah, and I think we brought this up. And so this is going to be my sort of... Uh, um final um thing to end off on this because you asked me in the and when you first asked me um do this um on how aquaculture can help with the conservation of our marine and freshwater wildlife rather than so um aquaculture has is definitely a widespread discipline that can cover so many things you have to um take into account that aquaculture doesn't just mean um food production aquaculture is very easily you know growing for um aquarium trade um growing for like we were talking about supplemental stocking in farm pond to private reservoirs where people are trying to grow trophy largemouth bass, trying to grow trophy channel cap. Um, then you have the aquaculture facilities that are going for food production. So in terms of conservation of marine and freshwater wildlife, you have to take that into account in that um, fresh uh, marine fish, aqua, you have the on land aquaculture facilities are actually very efficient however trying to do aquaculture facilities of the giant nets in the open ocean are usually incredibly in inefficient um because like take the giant salmon net farms over in the pacific ocean the um pacific ocean you know they leave these open um these nets the salmon cannot get out that's in the small they it's small if it's large enough that smaller fish can swim through the nets and go through there. However, they still have to be supplemental fed. And the thing is, is they are supplementing feeding these with sardines, which is causing a crash. So, and because of the conversion factor, it would make much more sense to eat those sardines. Protein. Because However, people don't want to eat sardines, they want to eat a salmon. Yeah. So freshwater resources, aquaculture facilities is going to be critically important going on Strictly because with decreasing land availability, land availability, land availability and fresh water availability are going to be the two largest issues coming up within the next 30 years. Um, 
specifically freshwater. Land availability, you know, urban sprawl is becoming a much more thing. America has a really bad habit of growing out instead of growing up um, because we have had that option. So growing out instead of growing up. And then there's just too many straws trying to drink the same amount of water. So right now we have to figure out how to kind of make our water go to use. And the worst thing about it is in the future is, and politicians have tried to do this before and it's been a dismal failure, is you cannot do positional bargaining with natural resources. And what I mean by positional bargaining is say a um, potato farmer, a cattle farmer, and a fish farmer, an aquaculture facility. They all need X amount of water. They need this. There is not enough water for all three of them to operate. So what a politician does is he says, okay, well then you're going to get X minus this. You're going to get X minus this and you're going to get X minus this. And we're just going to kind of split it out evenly between all three of y'all and it's going to be fair. However, that causes an entire crash of the food system because no one got enough water to create the resources so now everyone lost but the politician trying to make everyone happy made it to where it what he thought was fair rather than just saying no you get this amount of water to produce your thing it sucks but the other two we gotta help you out another way um and those sorts of issues are going to be coming up more and more as water availability drastically decreases so in terms of marine, I would say aquaculture is much more heavily focused on your sort of um, fish populations, the fish species themselves. Whereas I believe the freshwater aquacultures um, is going to be much more about your water availability and land availability and protein availability since these farm and ranches are going under um, due to inability of 